Hi, I'm Ken Ramsley. I'm a team member of the Planetary Geosciences Group at Brown University. And this video is a narration of some geology seen from space. It's a simulation. Um, and one of the questions we have is, what, and it's sort of an odd kind of a question, is what does the Earth look like from space? And when you think about it, it's like, well, we should really know by now. But if you think about it, going back over the history of, of entertainment, uh, science fiction, or whatever, you look at some of these old movies and it's like, wow, they didn't get that right. They forgot about the clouds or, or you know, the ocean isn't like that color blue or whatever. And, and so if you think about it, for a very long time, uh, we've been trying to visualize what space looks like. Now, the astronauts who have been to space have a very clear idea what it looks like. But if we're trying to visualize it for ourselves um, from various perspectives, various landforms, um, what does it really look like? Uh, we, we can't just immediately send a space probe up and say, we want to look at what Hawaii looks like right now, this minute. Um, what, what, can we, what can we actually see from space? Uh, we look at Google Earth and we can zoom in right down to the last pixel, but that isn't really what, a, in a practical sort of way, what an astronaut sees. And so th this video is, is, is trying to be real about, about the problem of what can you see from space, what does it look like, what can you identify, what can you learn from it. So I'm, I, what I've done is I've made a, a simulation um, with a combination of tools, uh, including Google Earth. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we're aboard the International Space Station and we're going to fly over uh, basically South Central Asia. And we're going to have a look at what the planet looks like, the best simulation we've been able to come up with so far. And one of the ideas here is, is to identify geological landforms at the scale of an astronaut looking down from the space station. Okay, so we're starting the, the simulation here. In the first screen here, we show the, the, the track of the simulation. It starts at the northern part of the Caspian Sea and runs across uh, the, the south portion of, of the Asian steppe and then along the Himalayan mountains um, and eventually out into uh, the Bay of Bengal. So we start off looking at, at a river delta that, that flows into the northern part of the Caspian Sea. It's a major river, but, but at this scale, at this distance, it, it's actually fairly small. And then as we sweep further uh, inland away from uh, the Caspian Sea, we, we can see that there's desert terrain, uh, arid terrain. You, can, uh, you have that impression. Um, because of the color. The color is a good indicator that there isn't a lot of vegetation. Um, but it, locally it's modified by the motion of water. And of course the motion of water is, is modified by the, the shape of the land itself. Water will only flow in the direction that, uh, that the land allows. Now we also see evidence of, of human activity. We can see a sort of a spoke pattern of you know, these aren't roads. At this scale, we can't see roads, but what we're seeing is the disturbance of vehicles traveling on roads, blowing dust, um, and so forth. And just the, the, you can have sort of a secondary effect, even though the, the actual feature may only be a few dozen meters wide. Uh, th those, you know, the effect can obviously spread several kilometers. Okay, uh, coming into the screen now is what's left of the Aral Sea. And uh, water flowing into the Aral Sea from the Himalayas off to the east uh, is diverted in, into um, irrigation. And that's the green patch at the bottom of the screen here, uh, where a lot of the, the water that, that once flowed into the Aral Sea has been uh, put to other uses. And now the Aral Sea has no source of water, or a very limited source of water, and it's been drying up over the last several decades. Um, to the point where it's only about 20%, 15% of its original uh, area, and probably volume-wise, um, probably 97% of the water isn't there anymore. Okay, so past the Aral Sea, we, we begin to see these sort of dome structures, very large. Uh, you know, the scale on the screen is uh, several hundred kilometers uh, left to right, so these are very large features that are not formed by erosion. They're, they're formed by stresses in, in the crust of the Earth. 
as as it buckles in various ways. And then here, here coming up on the on the right part of the screen, we see even more buckling. And then it it, it gives way not you know, from dome sort of features to more of a a uh, folded mountain kind of features and valleys. You can see valleys in the right here above the Google logo um, flowing from right to left, uh, flowing away from the higher elevations. And the, qu the question is, well, where's all this force coming from? You, you can see the evidence of, of, of displacement, of landform displacement. And what's really happening is that, that a part of the Earth, the, the plate that that um, India is attached to is being driven from south to north into the underbelly of of the main Asian plate, and the, the two plates are, are are forcing against each other, and that's causing buckling. That would happen if you took two pieces of paper and jammed them together, and they ran out of room. So you can see evidence of of this force, and it, it has a sort of a curved form to it because. There's a sort of a there's a central area of force, but then then that 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 tapers off around the edges, and so there, it tends to have sort of a a, a, a um, hemispherical shape. So we're seeing the left hemisphere uh, in in the form of these north south folds, but that you can see how it curves more more to the right in the upper uh, upper right hand corner of this of the screen here. Now the elevation gets so high that even in summer we're seeing evidence of extremely high elevations in the form of snow, and of course snow uh, will either melt and produce water, uh, or it'll come down as glaciers, um, and eventually reach lower elevations where it will melt out. As as climate changes, the elevation where glaciers transform into meltwater is increasing in altitude and so in, in essence what's happening is the glaciers are melting away uh, and over the next several decades we will we will see evidence of glaciers that, that have retreated significantly in fact we already do see that um, so you're an astronaut you're looking down and you're saying well I'm not going to see glaciers retreating in, in over the course of a six-month mission you know what sort of things will you see and one of the things you will see are changes in seasons as meltwater is is much more pronounced, perhaps in the spring, um, you, you'll see evidence of you know vegetation greening and becoming less green. Um, you'll see evidence of snow collecting and melting and so forth. Okay, so you can get a, a sense of change in that in that way. Um, okay, in, in the screen right now we, we have a, we have a basin. So it's sort of the opposite of that, that dome feature. It buckled, not in an upward direction, but it buckled downward. And you can see in the lower part of the screen, you can see the, the India plate being jammed right into the underbelly of Asia. And it has these arcuate shapes as the, as the stresses are relieved, applied and relieved. And there's a very pronounced um, boundary caused by the, the Himalayas here. And on the leading side, you have a very green, lush area. On the trailing side, you have uh, very arid. Um, there, are, there are lakes, but that's basically collected water from runoff, uh, from melting glaciers. And so what's happening is, is you have a, a uh, preferential direction of airflow across the continent, and it comes in moist and warm, encounters the mountains, and the mountains strain out, wring out that uh, that that moisture by increased uh, elevation. Uh, at higher altitudes, the temperatures drop, the air pressure drops. So all of that, the, the ability the, the ability of the air to carry moisture is diminished. So it rains out, it snows out, and by the time the air gets over to the other side of the Himalayas, it's very arid comes down the other side there's almost no water left so uh, that, that that's this is this is the great rain shadow of the planet there are others but this is a this is a huge rain shadow where the moisture is wrung out as it travels across the mountain range now coming into the screen is more of northern India uh, you can see huge rivers all of these rivers are are comparable to the Mississippi and in some cases even bigger uh, there, as global warming is taking hold, uh, and the amount of uh, melting is increasing, these rivers are are 
uh, full year round, and they're increasing in their amount of volume, um, potentially with flooding and possibilities and so forth. So that's another thing you could be looking for if you're in space, is getting a sense for whether or not the, the rivers are running greater or less than, than what you've been observing previously. So as we come across the northern part of India, you can see that the rivers are flowing mostly um, west to east, left to right. And that's, that's evidence that India is not flat, uh, even, even though it's much more flat than, than the Himalaya Mountains and the folding that's going on there. On a longer wavelength, uh, India is also folded uh, slightly. There's a slight undulation, there's a slight... Uh, irregularity in, in the topography such that the f rivers are flowing from uh, west to east. And amazingly, um, over the course of the last few minutes, we've overflown uh, population centers that total into the hundreds of millions. And yet, if you look down, it, it, it first glance, you would have very little sense that, that there's much in the way of civilization. And if you, you took out a telescope or binoculars or whatever, you'd start to pick out evidence of cities and so forth. But at the scale of, of regular human vision at the altitude of the International Space Station, which is about 400 kilometers, um, you don't really have a strong sense of, of human habitation in cities. So eventually we, we get across India and we're heading towards the Bay of Bengal. And you can see that the, the, the rivers are beginning to converge and, the, and river deltas are, are formed at the uh, intersection of the rivers and the ocean. And the process continues out into the ocean. And the, the sediment that's carried by the rivers is carried out into the ocean and gradually uh, fills in the ocean adds deposits. It becomes, it will eventually be land in the future. It will be the sandstones and the limestones and the, and the mudstones and so forth. Okay, so we're back to our track and we see how we've traveled across the southern Asian steppe. And uh, that, that's our video simulation. This is my first narration of it. One of the odd things about narrating something like this is you could narrate it at any scale. You could narrate it at a. Uh, you could narrate it to focus in on any particular uh, aspect of it. Um, but th this is this is my introduction, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it.